bar starts with a note of gratitude. I want to thank the culture for making my interview with Dr. Ayan Lavanzant one of the most popular and actively engaged content offerings the Grio has produced. So before I tell you my thoughts, let's replay the clip that had some of y'all deep into your feelings. I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if he owns the bus? If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. That's, no. That's a problem. Now let's address the response to the interview of what some of y'all are calling a backlash. So let me be clear. First, I am a professional disruptor. So backlash is my business. And I will always take it on the chin for the sake of advancing the work, conversation, or movement. So know that I am completely unfazed by the onslaught of nasty comments wishing me a sad, lonely, bitter existence until my untimely death. Now that is some weird energy to be wishing onto a black woman, especially one who has dedicated her life to the liberation of black folk. But you know, whatever, I guess, go off. See, I wanted to talk about how do we close the gap between black women who do show up in a so-called masculine posture, those of us that are providing and building and protecting due to circumstances that we might feel make us feel that if we don't do it for ourselves, we will have to go without the resources and protections we need to feel safe in this world. But Dr. Ayala went in a different direction. She asked me a personal question. And y'all know I have been extremely transparent about the fact that my life choices and my chosen lifestyle are far outside of the norm. So when I said that I would date the bus owner, a lot of y'all heard something different. Some of you heard the following. Bus drivers are whack. Bus drivers are broke. Oh, and I'm too good for a bus driver. The only thing is, y'all made that part up. See, I said what I said. But then some of y'all started talking about salaries and hourly wages, pensions and benefits. And that's wild because I was never talking about money at all. I was talking about black ownership, but some of y'all made it about money. I'm talking about ownership, black enterprise and entrepreneurship because really I am talking about black liberation. And if you read my book, you'll understand why. So I'm standing ten toes down on that position, and I don't really care if you're hurt or offended by it. And since some of y'all are already big mad, let me go ahead and make you incensed. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. Oh boy. The gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. Today's sidebar starts with a note. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, you are now in tune with Trey Donovan on True Reactions. Now gather around, boys and girls, as we navigate through Ebony K. Williams' tragic love life. Yes, she has now chosen the path of IVF instead of choosing the bus driver. Oh, no. Can Ebony K. Williams find love as a single mother in this modern universe? Only time will tell. Now, this content is not meant to defame, bully, harass, or harm any of the subjects mentioned. However, we will educate and entertain to the best of our ability. Now, pull up a seat as we explore. Now.
you already know what time it is. You guys are in tune with Trey Donovan. Hit that like and subscribe button. And that notification bell, because your boy is struggling with the engagement. My shit hit a major decline, but we got these drop frames and these sound and audio problems figured out. So it should be smooth sailing from here on out. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, in the preview, I mean, you saw Ebony K. Williams doubling down on that sapphire, strong, independent black woman um, characteristic or character map. And the thing about it is that she got the, the end result of what that type of energy gets you. What independence gets you is IVF. I mean, or a co-parenting situation, single motherhood. Um, and that's pretty much it. If women aren't going to decide that they want to cooperate with men at this point, then, it, I mean, the trend is only going to keep moving in this direction where we see relationships fall through, especially ones we thought that were um, strong and going to be long-term. We're seeing those fall through. And, and on the flip side, this whole um, co-parenting situation that's becoming more pre prevalent with single motherhood, um, it's not making any sense anymore. And I would even go as far to say that women who are choosing IVF need a psych evaluation. I mean, if you can't rewire your outlook on life to be able to settle and able to naturally procreate, then to me that that needs to be psychologically <laughs> assessed. Um, I know most people will disagree because now we're here in this stage where unnatural forms of procreation are being more accepted. Um, and hey, wherever the money's flowing, then we're gonna justify it. So I guess I'll be the crazy guy over here. I mean, but it's honestly a really interesting case. Um, this is an interesting case study, Ebony K. Williams. I mean, we're going to be talking about this for, for decades. I mean, generations, even psychologists are going to look back on this because she's laid um, the groundwork of the aftermath of this grand design of psychologically deteriorating um, women's biological imperatives. And that's all this is. That's really all this is. I mean, technically she did execute her biological imperative, but at the end of the day, it was with the help of men's invention. And that's the, that's the ironic part about it. Uh, as independent as women try to, um, as, as much as women try to um, create this perception that they're independent of men, that they don't need men, I mean, it's pre it's apparent that she needs a man to procreate in some form or another, whether it's by this unnatural means of IVF, which were, was an invention by men in modern medicine or modern science, I would say. And on the flip side, we're talking about natural procreation where you need a man to have intercourse and obviously, you know, let off his sperm inside of you. So... <sighs> Ebony K, either way, all roads lead back to a man in this whole fallacy, this false ideology of independence from nuclear family. It's going to just lead to a road of grief. And now you've given your your child and Ebony K. Williams is I'm pretty sure she's in a good place financially. I mean, she has her whole career ahead of her. She has a platform. So financially, the kid's going to be fine. But from a psychological standpoint, the kid's not going to have a family. And we're kind of reaching that point of. I would say we're in a weird space right now where folks are starting to believe that we don't need a nuclear family to move society forward. Um, and then we got the folks that are trying to hold on for dear, they're hodling for dear life onto the nuclear family 
and they're creating channels and trying to spread awareness. But the trend is just going towards the unnatural means of things. It's like we're going to be in a whole Blade Runner type situation. I don't know if you guys seen Blade Runner. Let me go pull up some Blade Runner. <laughs> you guys need to see this shit. <clears throat> you guys need to see this shit. Hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the like and subscribe. Oh, there I go right there. I was checking out the feedback on the Deontay Wilder stream. Um, Blade Runner. You guys need to see what the world is going to turn into within the next 15 to 20 years. Um, I'm trying to not get a copyright. So this is pretty much, I'm going to turn the sound off. So Blade Runner is like pretty much a technocracy where that's pretty much where we're heading. We're in a techno technocracy now. Once we go crypto and we remove any kind of backing from um, our currency, that's when we're in a technocracy. Uh, and that's when technology rules government for the most part. And with where, where AI is heading, I don't even think we're going to get to the point where we can be able to distinguish when AI is in control of us. I mean, right now, I, I mean, I use chat GPT. I don't know how how advanced um, as far as AI is with chat GPT and what's actually really out there. But using chat GPT, that shit ain't up to par with the innovation and creativity of a human. It, it need I can tell AI still needs humans to power and in and um and um control the AI platform interface or whatever. Um so that I think that's pretty much where we're at with that. But look at this shit. Like this is where we're heading. Like <laughs> You see men walking around all gloom, gloomy, and you don't really see couples. Everybody's just pretty much doing their own thing. Everybody's weird as shit. Uh, everybody's got dyed hair. Uh, uh, I don't really care too much for the. I'm trying to go to like the house, and there's this scene. Like, okay, this is the scene I was trying to get to right here. So. This is a simulated girlfriend. This isn't uh, his real girlfriend. I mean, he's not even a real person. He's like an android. But this is like the pinnacle of where this shit is going. When I see like IVF and all this whole unnatural means of, of procreation. Um, because men are, are pretty much alone now. Um. And let me just say, ladies, before you come in here talking about men are, are, are lonely, it's lonely is a feeling alone is a state of being. So it's one thing to feel alone and to be alone is totally different. So and I'm not speaking for, for anybody else. I'm just speaking straight. So men are alone for the most part. Um, once they reach adulthood, I mean, some males kind of stay around their immediate families, but for the most part. Males are kind of off doing their own thing, own thing, trying to find themselves. It's like the whole prodigal son story. That's a very relevant story for most men where they go off and have to find themselves and become that man independent from the, the immediate family that he was raised under. So he has to make a name for himself. Now, Blade Runner, this time period is at... It's. I would say this is the aftermath of feminism. This is the aftermath of feminism where women are, they're all monetized um, and men now have to partake in the, these kind of relationships. And you kind of see it rolling out now with like men who have like AI girlfriends and they're opting into like AI relationships where, you know, there's no human, real human interaction involved. So yeah, man, I mean... We'll get back to Ebony K. Williams. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, that's Blade Runner right there. I just had to bring that up because I always get flashes of this when I see people promoting and opting in to unnatural means of reaching their biological imperatives. 
when they have the options to actually do it the natural way. And I think that truly needs to be psychoanalyzed. It, I don't understand how it shouldn't. I mean, when I was in psychology, when I was studying in psychology, um, gender dysmorphia was a thing then. Now it's not. I heard in Peru, they're they've um made homosexuality um a, a clinical diagnosis so now you're clinic you're deemed clinically insane if you fall under that category i think it's in peru um I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing but my whole perspective is once you start moving away from your natural state of being, I just think that needs to be psychologically analyzed. Not saying Ebony K. Williams is crazy or anything like that, but, and I'm sure she has a therapist, but mostly, most of these therapists are trying to keep you in the sessions. They're not really trying to release you or, 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 um, fix what's happening. Let's go over to Ebony K. Williams, look at some of her, her responses on the matter and her, uh, attitudes towards relationships because she said a lot of shit you know she said a lot of shit and uh that's like she said a lot of shit where it, it's it's cemented and it's 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 merch now it, it's <laughs> like it, it's pretty much you can't walk you can't walk back from it from the things you've said about men and we've seen your attitude in 4k uh why ugly people can't be powerful i mean i get like it's just shit like this i mean i don't I see any man who who wants a cold woman like this um well you know and she's a beautiful woman but a she has the body the look no really anybody he's just a cold really? yes. anybody can be pretty anybody child. she says a lot of bullshit it's really about stepping into control and confidence in mm. your look and owning it mm. and asserting it no man actually. wants to so dick cheney to be around this shit well i don't see any intention with dick's look kid rock very intentional with his look pretty we're just writing people's looks here. Very low frequency. I mean, I know she has a platform. I don't know why she has or like where she came from. I didn't start seeing her until people like started roasting her and around the whole time with, with Kevin Samuels, the whole modern woman spiel. And she was like the primary character type for the modern woman, her with Vivica A. Fox. And I didn't really start seeing her until you know, the gender wars, so. Mm. And it's like she's pushing this narrative of. Uh, I might do another episode on this one because I got to go. Listen to black. these real boss men. Listen, they do not desire. A financial Let's speed this up. She's, they are not attracted that, to it. I mean, that's it true. The pee -pee goes, burr, burr, burr. It does. I'm telling you the truth. It's not even about being it's not even about being an intellectual equal. It's just more so about not having to come home to someone who's going to be combative and have that matter of fact tone with you all day and that's kind of what women do who are proud of their their phds and their education it's like we can't just have a, a conversation without having to push these narratives and political positions or getting offended about someone's political stance i'm starting to notice like women's political like women in conversation now more so will take a political stance and barely even know you know know you and they won't even like ease up into like a more like hearted conversation like they really take political stances now i mean if you look if you see them like their social medias they got like i get it you're spreading awareness but like it's getting to the point now where like all women are become like i won't say all women but a lot of women are just becoming radicalized and fixated on political agenda and i just never seen that at this magnitude before so i i just stay away from this shit when i see women with 
these hashtags and I'm not going to say the hashtags because I'm not trying to get flagged, but um, I don't get into the political shit because it, it's just going to keep going back and forth. And at the end of the day, these bipartisan issues are just to create money flow. Whether they get backlash or not. So we have a lot of issues when it comes to their exploits. That's it. Their exploitations. Mm -hmm. Right, Ebony? Well, These, that hairstyle is insane with the nails. And when I see hairstyles like this, I just see mental health. Like in the DSM, dyed hair and changing your appearance, those are criteria for a diagnosis of some kind of psychological disorder. Um, there's some kind of cognitive dissonance when you when you're trying to change your natural appearance, and that's all I deduct that to, no matter what a person says. So when someone isn't coming as they are, you're trying to hide something. Leading conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amongst black women and beyond. I think the main thing I've learned from this, y'all, is people really want black women to be happy with anything. What people really want black women to understand is that we are to be uh, accepting of our positioning as the least desirable in society. I can't, I can't listen to this shit. Nobody really wants a black woman. Thus, I mean, we, we love black women, beautiful creatures, but... We should be happy. We should be grateful. I mean, shut up about it. And if you are a black woman, yes, I'm not saying you should shut up, but you should definitely be grateful. From the pits of hell, right? Um, and you but like, what are we complaining about? And who are people? Let's start getting specific. I can't like we we're speaking too broad. Like, who are these people you're talking about? Upon a value system, insist upon a criteria, insist. Upon Can we get specific here? Into which we want to operate romantically, uh, we are demonized. Yes, we are. So this is just an echo chamber of victimhood mentality. I, I see, I'm starting to see some black women wake up from this and take accountability and talk to other black women with truth. And that's a good thing. But for the most part, the majority of them aren't doing this shit. They're in these echo chambers, um, kicking up shit and pointing fingers at who's the blame. So at this point, um, all we can do is pray. All we can do is pray. Uh, when I, like I said, when I see a woman who has all the tools to get a man take this route, you know what she's all about. Uh, she's all about the the appearance because that's honestly why these women don't want a man who works blue collar because it's how it looks. But a lot of these men who work blue collar are making six figures because they're they work scarce scarce jobs. Um, these jobs don't have a lot of people that want to work them. So there's a scarcity and demand for, of, of employment op, and of employment for these jobs, like waste management. There's a scarcity of, of waste management technicians. So that's pretty much where we're at now. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm not, and I'm not here to like make fun of her or do anything like that. We're, we're past that. Like I'm past, we're past the gender war shit. Like I'm not, I'm too, I feel like I'm too old to be on here making fun of women. And I'm just here to point out the bullshit, crack a few jokes here and there. Um, because it's a lot of bullshit going on. Anyone who thinks this is normal, who goes through IVF to bring a child into single, a um, single mother home is like that's some weird shit like that's weird once again it needs to be psycho psychologically assessed um her therapist is doing a terrible job so whoever is canceling this woman from a psychological standpoint you need to look in the mirror there therapy should be helping you obtain the outcomes you desire or reshaping your outlook to obtain those outcomes. Um, and if you want me to believe that IVF was the outcome that she wanted, to me, that was like, and I get it. Women want to want to have, they want to have children. That's like, it kicks in. It, obviously it kicked in at the wrong time, but it kicks in at a certain point, their motherly instinct, their motherly nature. I get it, but. You got to make sacrifices and I, you didn't make any sacrifices with IVF. You didn't humble yourself to a man. So you're going to reap the consequences of taking those shortcuts, bypassing the man, bypassing, having to fix 
the inside, the interior, um, because you would have been rewarded. I, I don't like to speak on God. I think God is a personal thing. I don't like going around talking to people about God. But the universe would have rewarded you if you would have tailored your characteristics, your virtues, your outlook, your expectations. And you needed to take, you should have taken a really hard look at yourself. Like I seen Ebony K. Williams come to light in like one of her um, interviews. She kind of budged a little bit, but I think someone had to reel the reins back on her ass. I think she has handlers for sure. Like she has someone that's, that's kind of like keeping her in line. Um, because I've seen her kind of spit a little bit of truth about where black women are, but this whole IVS shit, like, that's like deep in shit right there. And it's kind of like desperate. Like, we would have rather you get with the bus dude, like, whether he owned the bus or not. Like, there's some, there's some six figure bus drivers in, in LA. So, as far as the LA Metro is concerned, but she can't take a bus driver to like, these little bullshit ass interviews, her little stupid CNN green room. She can't take a, a brush driver to her, her little powwows and shit, di- shindigs and her events where she thinks she's the shit. And that's what it comes down to with, with a lot of black women. They want to be white women. So, and you can't, like you can't be white women. That, that slot's already taken by white women. And then there's Latinas. So, <laughs> like there's fucking Latinas. Like you, <laughs> You can't. So you got you got to pick a new lane here, um, and we can see that niggas can see that. But um, yeah, yeah, you guys got to pick a new lane. This isn't gonna work. And eventually, we become the ungrateful, angry black woman. And I'm not. I just. I personally won't. There was a black man out there who would have knocked you up happily. Probably not after the whole. Does he own the bus? Like, let's get out of here. Let me go back to main view. This is some bullshit. I'm not I, like I told y'all I wasn't going to sit through the whole Ebony K. Williams v- video. I just wanted to show you some of her attitude and how she got to IVF. <laughs> but yeah, man, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Ebony K. Williams will find some? Oh, and let me bring this up. Ebony K. Williams. You went on on um on television and told Ayala Van Zant that you you wouldn't choose a dude who drove a bus. Um, even if he was able to show characteristics and qualities of being a good man and a man worth choosing. You you said you'd opt out unless he owned the bus or the bus. I don't know what, what you said. He had to have ownership or some equity in the bus, okay? Now, what do you think those bus drivers are going to say about you now when you're trying to date? Have you thought of that? Because your stock has plummeted. It has plummeted. It has... <laughs> it has plummeted, Shorty. Your stock has plummeted. Like, snap that shit away. Any stock you... Any market value you thought you had... Get up out of here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I got to go. I got to go meet up with somebody special today. So I got uh, some homework for you guys. Let me know in the comment section if you think Ebony K. Williams will find romance now that she's made it a lot harder. Or is she even looking anymore? To me, it seems like she's given up, given her course of action. But once again, it's your boy, Trey Donovan. You guys stay beautiful out there. Thank you for checking in. If you did watch this video on True Reactions, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me consistently now that I got my GPU card and I got these drop frames. Look, everything's coming out lovely. Everything's smooth. I'm pop blocking in this motherfucker. Like the sound is great. Like, come on. We got visuals everywhere. Okay. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share the video. Do all that. I'm gone. Peace.